Hey, what's up everybody? Brad the Etologist here. I've got a uh, water heater that's on the fritz. I've already determined what the problem is. I've got a bad lower heating element down here, uh, so I'm going to have to take that out. The power is off to this unit right now, but we'll test that again before we uh, proceed just to make sure. I've got the lower cover off, so I've already pulled that. Uh, and we're going to go through the whole procedure of, of changing this thing. I'm going to have to drain the tank, so I'm going to hook up a hose for, to that. I've already dragged my hose in from outside, and I've got a drain in the middle of the floor over here, so that's convenient. I won't have to run the hose outside. We probably need to, first things first, go ahead and drain the tank, but we have to turn the water off to the tank. also want to just look at what kind of tank it is. This is a Bradford White Corporation tank and there's the model number if you're interested it's a 50 gallon gives you the voltages it's on 240 so it's 4500 watts the upper and lower elements so i've already ordered uh, the whole kit i've got the elements i'm going to replace the thermostats the whole shebang in one shot i might as figure i might as well and i do have the correct thing we can see here it's 4,500 watts. I think this the whole um, kit was like 20 or 25 dollars on eBay or Amazon. I can't remember where I got it, but this is a what is this an ever built kit? So these are all pretty universal. Should be easy to do, but we're, I'll show you. Just bring you along, show you what all I'm doing. So this is the uh, upper thermostat, uh, and here's the reset button. If you're having problems, sometimes you can hit the reset button and it will just reset itself. That's that red button in the middle right there. But uh, this one, no such luck. So we've got a, and I tested it for continuity. Um, you can put your probes on this and you could test for voltage uh, there, but you can also, with the voltage off, you can test for continuity. So you can set your meter to two ohms and check to see that you have a content, uh, continuous element. And the top one is continuous but the bottom one was not. So the bottom one is certainly burned out, but this top one is gonna be as old as the bottom one. So I see no reason to leave this one in here or to leave any of really the rest of this when I've got a burned out element. I'm just gonna replace it all in one go. Um, I may save this for like an emergency and maybe save the top element for just an emergency or something like that. Like if, you know, next time I'm waiting on parts, I could pop one in without having to wait too long. But yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, shut the water valves. So we'll have one for a hot and one for a cold coming in. I don't know which is which. I'm not really sure on this one without being able to feel them and have the hot water on. I think this one is the hot. I'm just gonna close both of them though. Sometimes when you close a valve like this that hasn't been opened or closed in a long time, you'll get a little bit of a leak here, but and that's not a huge deal. But if it starts to pour water, what you might do is uh, open the valve all the way back up and then tighten this down right here to make sure it's all tight and then close it again so you don't continue to get leaks. But that all looks okay. All right, so now that that's closed, what I want to do is hook up the hose over here. I'll hook up the hose to the drain, and then uh, we'll go ahead and open that, we'll crack that open and let it drain off. The whole tank has to drain. It's a 50 gallon tank so yeah it could take a little bit to drain all this. Yeah it's really it's really kind of a pain in the ass that they turned this thing the direction that they did. Look at this. So they've got all the the guts and everything sticking out the other side and they did that I think so they could get the uh, conduit down for the electrics on that side. I mean, seems like they could have extended that maybe and brought it over here and turned this thing around so that you could have easier access out the front over here. Would have made it, things a lot easier. Certainly would have made it easier to film. This is where the power comes in. So this red and this black wire right here where the power come in. Uh, and they attach up here to these top screws. And we're going to just check and double check that that has no power on it. I turned the power off to this unit when it first went out. It's been it's been a little while ago now, but I'll show you how to check for it. We're going to set our meter to voltage. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hook on, I've got these probes that allow me just to hook on to something. I'm gonna hook across there and uh, touch over to here. And you can see, hopefully you can see right there, across uh, those top two, I have nothing there. There's no voltage to speak of. There's 0.2 volts. Um, right now it's measuring DC though. You gotta measure, make sure you're measuring AC on your meter. Otherwise, you might have problems. Okay, I'm measuring AC right now. I'm getting zero AC volts across that top, which I've unhooked the uh, power to that, like I said. So, there's no power. Now we're gonna hook up our hose and go ahead and drain. All right, first thing I gotta do is get this little plug off of here. Okay. She's going. I do want to make sure I get this kind of good and tight on here because I've got on the other side of this wall over here I've got carpet and I don't want any leaks right here if I can help it. All right. I think that'll be good enough. All right, let's crack. Uh, now there's a pressure valve at the top we're gonna have to open up to get it completely drained, but I wanna open it sl <coughs> slowly. Uh, so I'll open it slowly down here and then we'll release the pressure valve up here on top. Okay. We should be able to just loosen that. Let me get my hose working along. That's what she said. Okay, so the pressure valve is up here on top. On mine, it's up here on top. It's this guy right here. And uh, you can crack it, you can close it, it goes either direction like this. Up is open, down again is gonna be closed again. So that is gonna be open and you can see here there's a there's a hose that runs down the side on this one and goes down low. Sit you guys over here so you can kind of see a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna crack that open just a little bit more. Okay, here it comes. That's my sump pump that kicks on right there because that drain in the floor is running to the sump. So we can see it's running out pretty good. Okay, so while that's draining, I can go ahead and uh, I'm not going to take out I'm not going to take out any of these. I am going to go ahead and uh, take this thermostat out though. Uh, first thing we got to do is re uh, release all the wires from that. All right, so the old one just snaps right in. You can see it has some uh,
And again, don't ever, obviously don't ever attempt to do this with the power still on. Make sure that you turn it off at the breaker box and then check it uh, to make sure that the power has disappeared. You want to check it first to make sure you know exactly where you're, you're testing and you see the 240 or the 208 or what, whatever you see there, one, um, whatever voltage that you see, check it. Okay, you should see 240 at the two main lines. Then go turn it off, check it again to make sure that it's down to zero, and then you should be good to go after that. So, but I'm gonna keep this on hand. I don't think this is bad, but um, replacing it's kind of a matter of course since you can get them so cheaply anyway. But that's something I can keep in case uh, my new one goes bad before the rest of the stuff is, you know, kind of past its uh, due date. Okay, so here's our new thermostat. It's exactly the same as the old one. And it will just snap right in place. You see these two little snaps right here. It will just snap right down onto that. Well, you know, I say that, but <laughs> sometimes things are it's easier said than done. There we go. There we go. Now then. And and very simple. Just replace your wires on the new one. This is all just pure joys of home ownership right here. Kind of crap that you gotta do. <laughs> Stuff that you uh, never thought you would have to learn, you know, 20 years ago is now an absolute necessity. That is, if you don't want to pay somebody ever, you know, to come out every time this happens. Which, I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, if you have absolutely zero uh, skills around. Uh, electrics then yeah you know you're probably better off calling somebody but uh, if you have some experience around electricity and you're comfortable with it you know how to throw a breaker you know there's no reason to call somebody each and every time something like this happens still getting a pretty good trickle here it's actually more than a trickle it's still pouring out so I mean like I said we had 50 gallons so it's gonna take a little bit but there's our top thermostat done. Uh, I'll go ahead and replace the bottom thermostat as well. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. And again, very simple. Just snaps right in. And it's got these little rails that it snaps onto. You see this rail right here on the side? It kind of looks like a little ski slope. That's snapping into these uh, little voids down here. Real easy to get in and out. Here's the new one. It should just snap right in place. And it does. All right. So now we're almost ready, almost ready uh, to get this bottom element out. We can go ahead and take the, uh, the power lines off of it. And these are running from that top, or the red one is at least, it's running from uh, up top there. And again, the power's off, we've already tested that, so no problem there. We're gonna wait for the water to all drain before we take these out, because I don't wanna deal with, like I said, a bunch of water on my floor. I've seen people online um, replace these really quickly, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll unscrew this almost all the way out, and then they'll take the, um, Take the old one out and then shove the new one in like real quick and you know they some water does pour out uh but it looks like they're able to do it pretty quickly you know if you have an unfinished basement and it's well drained and stuff maybe that's the way to go but uh, i'm not gonna test that <laughs> not when i've got carpet on the other side of the wall just right off camera over here like i said if if if, if it floods it's gonna go right into that carpet so no thank you all right so again i'm gonna save this old thermostat just in case i think the thermostat is probably all right um and it's just 
most likely just the element. So I'll keep these both on hand for a rainy day, the old ones. Um, but you're going to see here in just a little bit when I get that bottom element out, just how bad it probably is. I'm guessing it, you know, it hasn't been changed in a little while and it's beyond time for it to go. You can see right here, that, I mean, it got hot and it burned a little bit of this uh, down here before it popped the breaker. But you can see that it definitely did, you know, do a little bit of burning right in here. See that burning? Yep. And then this was also, look at that. See how that's got black on it? So definitely, you know, there was some burning going on there. I mean, you should never open up one of these and see black, right? <laughs> so. Okay, so we're back down here. It's been a little while later and uh, looks like everything's bone dry now. Nothing else is coming out. So we'll come back over here, finish the job. We'll go ahead and start with the bottom. I hope these are going to work out. I don't know if they're going to be big enough. We'll see. They should be. I might have to go get something different though. Yep. I really need a socket for this and I don't have one that big. There we go. We got it. see oh my god this one is that one didn't even want to come out it's so corroded look at that wow look at that it actually ruptured right here see that I don't know if you can see it but this one is actually ruptured wow that's pretty bad it had obviously been a while for that one. Well, this thing is actually... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I got the wrong thing. This is going to be the wrong thing, I believe. Okay, because this is, this is much shorter than the replacement that I have here. It's going to be too long. Maybe not. I want to clean as much of this crap out of here as I can. I don't want all that crap on those threads. Let me go get a some a wipe or something. I gotta wipe that out before I put my new seal and everything in it. Yeah. Not gonna be able to see, but you can definitely see that there's a lot of crud that I'm gonna have to get off of there. lot of it down on the bottom. This is why it's probably not the greatest idea just to leave the water in it and pull the old one out and stick a new one in just because you, you're gonna have so much crud here and if you already have some of that calcium growth it's probably gonna just encourage more of it to start quicker so getting all of that as much as that out of the way as you can is probably a good idea all right so we'll put a seal on here new seal over that and we'll get this one in I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to work out it looks like it's going all the way in
So that's on there. Let's go ahead and back these screws out. Uh, which wire goes to which side is not going to really matter on this. You just need a black one to one side and a red one to the other side. So, okay, so we've got this, this thermostat. Set it to 125, I think, for now. About, well, about 130. Well, that's one problem. It doesn't seem to want to fit on that hook. I don't know how that was on there. Maybe it was just sort of hanging there? I don't know. I don't know on that one. Well, anyway, let's get this upper one. Yeah, this one's pretty bad, but it's not nearly as bad as that other one. And it's not breached. So this one actually still had a little bit of life left in it. But again, I'm not messing around with that. You change one, just change it all. Wipe this down pretty good. I don't want this uh, seal seat to be full of crud. Again, we'll just put our seal on here. This is the new one that came with the kit. Okay, that is pretty tight on there. <clears throat> okay, now this one's gonna go on something like this. So that's fine, that, it's that lower one that I'm kind of worried about. I have no idea how that's supposed to work. But uh, I don't wanna get this all back together though until we turn it back on. So first things first, I wanna, we're gonna shut this valve down here at the bottom and unplug the water hose. Tighten that all the way in. All right, put this little cap back on. Whoop, needs a seal. It's not gonna do any good, is it? Sure that sucker's capped off. I definitely don't want that leaking. Okay, now I don't want to put any insulation or anything back on it. Obviously, we can't you cannot put electricity to this until you fill it up. So we have to fill this thing back up. I want to do that slowly. Alright, now we're gonna open these valves. Uh, I do have I do still have this valve up here. Uh, open so what we want to do is we want to fill this up and st until something starts to come out of this until just at that point where something comes out and then we know this thing is full uh, then we got to go upstairs and turn some water on and run some water upstairs so let's go ahead and do that first so we'll I forget which one no, okay this is the hot so this is the one leading upstairs so we can actually go ahead and open that it won't matter If I can open it, shit. Okay, that's just some water that's trapped in the pipe leaking back down, but this is the one that's going to fill up the tank. I'm going to do it slowly.
Okay, so you can hear the water coming through. At the minute, some, the second something comes out of that pipe down there, this thing is full and I've got to throw this check valve. And also we're going to be checking for leaks down here at these to make sure we don't have any leaks. And if we do, we got to shut it off then too. Now again, this is 50 gallons, so it is going to take a bit. I'm amazed at how bad that one is. Man, that is so bad. Look at it. That is just terrible. The way it's split. It's split in several places. On, the, on different sides, it's split. It, it That thing exploded. All right, when this thing fills up, I should hear the characteristic you know, if something filling up and then spilling over here. Could probably stand to open this valve a little bit more. There's my paperwork. We want to make sure we're not leaking. Because now is when it'll start leaking. And we get all that pressure on it. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put something down there like a bucket or something, you know? <laughs> but I do have the drains right there, though. So, I mean, anything that ex that's excess will go but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea all right so as you can see you kind of missed the fireworks nothing really happened uh, I did make sure that I had one of the faucets upstairs turned on though before uh, before I completed this you can hear the water coming down now the drain that's uh, from the the top of the house my daughter's up there she turned the water on at the top of the house in the upstairs bathroom so We've got water to all the faucets now, so all the lines are full. Let's see, now I wanna make sure that I don't have any real leaks up here. These valves might try to leak on us. All right, turn it off, make sure it's, they're all off, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, so now the tank is full, the lines are full, and it's time. give this a little bit of a tightening. Tighten that up ever so slightly. This one seems okay. I don't think we're gonna leak any more there. All right, uh, now's the time to turn the power onto this. Okay, I'm gonna go fl uh, flip the breaker. You'll probably hear it. Make sure I've got all my wiring still attached okay well I hear it It does seem to be working and I do not see any leaks. So I think we're good here. Okay. Okay, so there's that. We will try it later and see uh, see if we got hot water. But that is generally how you change everything in a hot water heater or a water heater, I should say. That's a southern thing. It's a pretty redundant hot water heater, but there it is. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe. We'll see y'all later.